Hi again, everyone. Welcome back. Um, today, I'm going to take you through just a little bit of consolidation for Marxism, just responding to some of the questions that um, people have asked me over email. Um, so <clears throat> today, this is what I'm going to be focusing on. First of all, just a really brief overview of Marxism so that you can check your understanding of the key terms. Uh, then a bit of help with the evaluation questions. I think some people are just a bit unsure of whether they've kind of got the right thing written down and that kind of thing. So I'll give you some ideas there. Um, I'm also going to give you all of the concepts in the correct order for page 38. And it was quite a hard um, concept list, actually. It was quite a strange one. Um, so you can double check those. Um, and finally, I'm going to give you a little bit of help with planning and writing the 10 marker, which is on page 39 in your pack. So what I thought we could do just to start off with, like I would normally do a starter in a real lesson, really, um, is for you to grab yourself um, a piece of paper, separate piece of paper and a pen, um, and to have a look at this table here. Now, in this table is kind of all of the key terms um, relating to each of these key thinkers. So once you know these key terms, you've kind of got it, really. Um, so I'd like you to have a little look and see if you can um, explain, as it says here at the top, explain how it means that the family supports the capitalist system and benefits the bourgeoisie. So pause the video, write these things down. How do each of these concepts show that the family supports the capitalist system? Off you go. OK, once you've had a go, um, you can check your answers here. So for Engels, we've got that the monogamous marriage ensures that there is proof of paternity. So by paternity, I mean father, who the father is um, so that men can be certain that their wealth is be being passed down to their proper heir, like in the bloodline. So this keeps the wealth within the ruling class. Inheritance is a system which ensures that the wealth isn't redistributed, redistrib but instead it stays within the family. So I saw someone tweet the other day um, that they think that inheritance tax should be 90 percent. So this person, I'm not even sure it wasn't anyone like important or anything, but this person believes that um, when somebody inherits wealth from a dead relative, that it should be taxed 90 percent so that the wealth is then spread out amongst people that need it, a bit like a, well, it is a tax, an inheritance tax, um, which is an interesting point of view because we just sort of see it as really normal that we inherit money from our families uh, when they pass away. However, it's not the only option for what happens to all of their wealth. <clears throat> it could actually be redistributed and put back into public services and benefits and things. Um, instead. But because we have got the inheritance system, this makes sure that rich families stay rich um, and poor who don't inherit anything stay poor, keeping capitalism going. Zaretsky, um, parental power and primary socialisation. So Zaretsky here is arguing that the family um, keeps capitalism going, helps capitalism to function because it teaches children to obey authority, making them a passive and obedient workforce for the capitalists when they grow up. So the family has a role of teaching you to be obedient to authority by obeying your parents, and that gets you ready to obey your boss when you're older. Um, we've also got from Zaretsky the safe haven and the buffer zone. So this is the idea that the family kind of like replenishes the workers. The workers come home and it's a safe haven which distracts them from all the exploitation um, and poor working conditions that they've faced during the day. So this means they're able to return to work the next day and they're less likely to protest against their position by maybe going on strike or quitting or something because they've almost just forgotten about it because the family is a nice, safe bubble um, which distracts them from the uh, experience of oppression that they have at work. Finally, Zaretsky is a unit of consumption. Um, so similarly to Parsons, Parsons argues um, in functionalism that the family used to be a unit of production and that now it is a unit of consumption. Zaretsky agrees with this, that since industrialization, it has become a unit of consumption. Now, this means that the family can't make anything itself. It has to buy products 
made by the capitalists. So the family has to work in order to get money to buy food and essentials. That's one part of it. And secondly, all the money that they spend on those products then goes back into the pockets of the ruling class. Um, and the media plays a role in this by targeting adverts at children. Children then use pester power to get their parents to purchase products. So when you were looking through this section, I think I asked you to have a think about how that might happen at like Christmas time and things like that. Um, children will pester their parents for the latest thing um, and that therefore, again, means that parents have to work in order to buy those things and the money that they earn gives, is given back to the capitalists anyway. Next, we've got Althusser, and Althusser talks about how the family is an ideological state apparatus, which, if you remember, is a tool used by the ruling class or the state, um, so those in power, to socialise us or, or brainwash us, in a way, into the capitalist ideology. So the family brings us up to want to obey, to want to go to school and get an education, to therefore get a job, um, to work for our money. Um, now, the, it could socialise us, and some families do um, socialise their children instead into different ways of thinking, like, for example, um, being a communist. Um, you have some families who live like completely off the grid um, and live literally like in the woods, for example, and don't buy into the capitalist ideology at all. <clears throat> um, and they do like grow their own food and um, all that and make their own soap and all those kinds of things. There's an article about that and I'll try and find it for you in just a moment. Um, so it's not the only option to follow the capitalist ideology and to be told that you must work hard in order to succeed. It's just the way that we are taught, it's socially constructed. The family also plays a role in producing false consciousness because it socialises children into believing that capitalism is fair. So it teaches you guys, for example, that your place in society is determined by how hard you work and that that's a fair system. Um, but actually, you could look at it a different way to believe that you may never be one of the richest people in the world um, and you might as well just kind of work just to survive in a sense um, or not work at all, for example. But instead, in our capitalist society, the family does keep that false consciousness going. Finally, we've got Don Zalot, who agrees with Althusser that the working class are controlled and that the family plays a role in this control. But where Althusser is arguing that it's like an ideological control by socialising people, Don Zalot argues that the control element is actually much more forceful and oppressive. So um, Don Zalot talks more about repressive state apparatuses, RSAs, um, who are controlling of the working class in a much more forceful way. So he's talking here about like uh, state workers such as teachers and social workers and doctors who he argues police the working class families and give sanctions for any behaviour that goes against the capitalist ideology. Um, so for example, removal of children from families which are seen to be um, trouble. And that's when I asked you to have a look at the Troubled Families programme as a good example of this. And some of the language that was being used in the campaigns that you should have had a look at um, on YouTube and things were that these were like problem families. Um, whereas I can't think, I think it, I think it was Caitlin um, found something about how in a different um, area, in a different county, they refer to this programme as the Thriving Families programme focusing more on how we can get families to thrive rather than labelling them as trouble and as a problem. Um, so the Troubled Families Programme is a good example of this policing of families um, that Don Zalot's talking about. It may be Don Zalot French, but oh well, OK. Um, so then I was asked by a few people to have a look at the evaluation questions. So what I've done is put onto this PowerPoint the questions that I gave you to help you in the additional worksheet and then I'm going to just talk over them a little bit to give you a bit more information. So when we're evaluating Engels, remember that Engels is the one who talk, is talking about inheritance um, and talking about inheriting private property in the monogamous 
family. So the first question is why might this be regarded as an outdated and old fashioned view? Excuse me, just yawned there. Um, <clears throat> and I've asked you to consider the position of women, the changes in relationship norms and social mobility. So you might think about, for example, that Engel's view is a bit outdated and old fashioned because women are not just in this role, as Engel says, of basically like a prostitute who just produces heirs for rich men to pass their wealth down. Women aren't just in that role anymore. They are actually earning their own money um, and they have a lot more power in the family than Engels is suggesting. However, at the time he was writing, he was probably correct. But now we can say that it may not apply as much to all families in society today. Um, also, there are changes in relationship norms whereby we're not all monogamous anymore. Like in a postmodern society, um, people can have multiple partners if they wish to. Um, people have multiple partners monogamously, but one after another. So they might, so, you know, lots of people might get married and have a child with someone, break up, get remarried, have a child with somebody else. So things are a lot more complicated than they were when Engels was writing about this monogamous nuclear family where you have one partner for life. <clears throat> and finally, um, is it really true that there isn't any social mobility for the working class? Now, if I think about some of my own friends, I know some of my friends um, have got sort of working class backgrounds and parents and won't be inheriting any wealth from them, but they have done really well for themselves and are starting to build their own wealth. So um, I think the difference with today is that there are a few more opportunities for people in the working class to kind of move up in the world, but they still have to follow the capitalist ideology and work hard if they wish to do that. OK. Um, second one, some might argue that a monogamous nuclear family also benefits women. So I've asked you to consider why it would be useful for the woman to have, oh, sorry, for the woman to have um, proof of paternity, i.e. know who the father of their child is. Um, what would women gain from knowing this? So hopefully the kinds of things you thought about here were that it ensures that she does get financial support for her child. So the father has to take responsibility for the child because he knows that it is his. <clears throat> um, and the women can ensure then that their child also gets that inheritance um, so they can make sure that their child has a good life as well. Next question, how common is the patriarchal nuclear family today? So we kind of talked about that earlier um, and the idea that there are lots of different family types now and that even nuclear families with a man and a woman are not as patriarchal as they used to be. It's not just the man who has all of the power and wealth in the family anymore. Women can build their own wealth and are employed and have a bit more power. Um, so that's the kind of thing I was asking you to think about there. And also lots more people choose to live alone and not have a partner or not have children and leave all their money to like cat sanctuaries and things or whatever, charity instead. Um, so things have really changed. And finally, what is the main pattern of relationships today? Does everyone marry for life or are we serial monogamous? So this is what I was talking about earlier, having one faithful relationship after another. <clears throat> um, and this means that family life and inheritance then is more complex because a father might have fathered children to three different mothers um, and then how does the inheritance work then um, and that kind of thing. They might have stepchildren, are they entitled to some inheritance? They might have stepchildren who've been part of their life since the children were a baby, so are they also then entitled to inheritance? So it's not as straightforward again as when Engels was writing. OK, in order to evaluate Zaretsky, um, one question is this. Are families so easily brainwashed into a false consciousness? And I asked you to kind of consider people that you know and think about it, whether they are um, truly unaware of their exploited position as workers. And does the buffer zone, buffer zone function actually cloud any frustrations with work? So um, what you might want to think about here is that Zaretsky sort of suggesting that we all walk around in this bubble, not really knowing that we're being exploited, not really knowing that we're being like underpaid. <clears throat> um, 
um, and that we've got poor working conditions and not knowing that society is unfair. Um, whereas actually lots of people do know that, they are aware, but it doesn't matter. They still can't resist. They still can't kind of go against capitalism, even if they are aware, um, because they have to provide for their families and that kind of thing. So a bit of an evaluation there is that we're not all necessarily brainwashed into a false consciousness, but that instead we know that we're exploited, but we carry on anyway because we don't really have a choice. Um, and secondly, what type of family is this theory based on? Does it ignore other types of family? Consider children, the structure of the family, gender roles, etc. So Zaretsky's ideas about like pester power, <clears throat> for example, first of all, involves children pestering their parents for stuff. Um, not all families have children and you might have um, a family of just a, a man and a woman or a same sex couple um, and they might still consider themselves a family um, but they don't have any children so therefore the family today doesn't always involve children and pester power therefore doesn't isn't isn't relevant to all families um, thinking about the structure of the family and gender roles as well um, I'm thinking here about like the buffer zone thing <clears throat> and how women are less responsible for the buffer zone than they would have been in the past now because we have more symmetrical families. You could um, make a note of Wilmot and Young there as well to say, sorry, my throat's really croaky today. <clears throat> you can make a note of Wilmot and Young there as well to say that the family is becoming more symmetrical and therefore the buffer zone, the idea that women create this buffer zone um, may be a bit outdated as well. If you had any other ideas for any of those questions, then email them over and I'll send them out to everyone as well, because as you know, I like to hear your ideas as well as my own. <clears throat> OK, for Althusser, I wrote the evaluation for you. Um, so I've written, some might argue that the control of the working class is not just ideological, but actually more oppressive in a forceful way. So this is leading us into Don's a lot, really. Um, because he criticises Althusser's idea that um, the family is controlled ideologically and instead, instead says it's actually much more forceful than that and it's actually um, a policing of families. It's not just that they socialise and brainwash them, they're actually policed and if they don't follow the rules then there are actually quite sort of harsh consequences which might be removal of children um, and that kind of thing. Finally, to evaluate Don's a lot, um, the pack asks you to think about uh, conflict theorists and how they might view Don's a lot's argument. So other Marxists and feminists and how they might criticise Don's a lot. So they might accept that families are policed, but argue that he gives little explanation of why they are policed in the first place and who benefits from it. So other Marxists might argue that Don, Don's lot is not adequately explaining um, how the policing of the working class truly is supporting capitalism. So this is a criticism of his work, really, saying that he's not kind of gone into enough detail and depth um, and that other Marxists might want to develop his work further by kind of showing how the policing of the family is supporting capitalism. Feminists would also suggest that the policing of families might just benefit men and patriarchy because it might mean criminalising mothers. Um, so like in the Troubled Families programme, for example, is it necessarily the dads that are going to be subject to um, sort of being policed and watched and criticised and controlled? It's more likely to be the mothers who are seen as responsible for raising the children that are the ones being policed. So feminists might argue that as well. OK, and these are the concepts for you on page 38. Um, as I said, they weren't easy, these ones, so well done if you got them right. Just pause the video briefly and check um, that you've got them in the right order. OK, and we're going to then move on to having a look at this 10 mark question on page 39. 39. So this question is applying material from the item 
um, analyze two functions that the family may perform for capitalism. So you'll no notice that the question is worded slightly differently in your pack, um, but this is exactly how it would be worded in the exam, applying material rather than using it's applying. And that is an important distinction because you have got to take the points from the item and actually apply them to your own knowledge. Um, but you'll notice it says apply material from the item in a 20 marker. It would then say and your own knowledge. But in this question, it is only applying material from the item. So both of your points must be based on the item. I know I say this like every single time we do this, but um, can't stress enough how important that is that both of your main points must come from the item. Then you develop it with your own knowledge, but the actual sort of main arguments must come from the item. So I'm going to suggest that we use these parts. Firstly, that each new generation of workers is forced to undertake low paid alienating work to survive. And secondly, that it depends on the proletariat not seeking to overthrow this unequal system. So maybe pause the video now and start to have a think of your own ideas for how um, the family functions for capitalism in each of those two ways, um, two functions from the item, how is this done and what key thinkers might you use, etc. Okay, so hopefully you've paused to have a little think about this before I move on to the next slide. So um, this is a copy of the table that you've got in your pack. So if we say that we're going to take this first point that each new generation of workers is forced to undertake low paid alienating work to survive. So we want to think about how is the family involved in the forcing of workers to undertake this low paid alienating work. So um, this isn't the only answer, by the way, but I'm going to go with um, unit of consumption, Zaretsky. Um, and the idea that because we're a unit of consumption, the family is a unit of consumption, we must work in order to buy what is needed to survive. As we don't actually own anything ourselves to produce any wealth, we have to work in order to get things like food and clothes and stuff. Um, and Zaretsky then says that it's not even just the things that we need which are essential. It's also pester power being used by children to buy even more things like toys, etc. Um, and all of that then just leads to more profits for the capitalists. So in order to link this to the question, the family functions or performs a function for capitalism. You've got to get that in there. Application using the language in the question. The way uh, the family performs a function for capitalism because it ensures that not only do the proletariat have to work in order to buy what is needed to survive, they then must put their money back into the pockets of the capitalists. So we go to work to earn money, not very much money either, in comparison to the profits being made um, by the capitalists, because we have to then give that money back to them for the stuff that we actually have made. Does that make sense? So the proletariat go to work in say, let's say like a, a factory that peels potato, like peels potatoes, is that? Anyway, let's say that that exists, it doesn't, but anyway. Um, that worker must go to work in order to buy food to feed his family. So he goes to work and the capitalist can get away with paying him not very much money because he has to go. He doesn't have a choice and there are no other better paid jobs. So he goes to work, then he comes home and in order to then um, buy potatoes for his family, he gives his money back to his boss in order to get some of the potatoes that he has farmed and harvested um, and peeled that very day. So it's all a big cycle, really. Analysis. This is a thing where um, people often get a bit stuck. It's not the same as evaluation. Um, it's a furthermore. It's not saying, however, a functionalist would criticise this view. It's saying um, you can compare to functionalists, but it's saying like furthermore, other people would think this. So I'm going to um, suggest here that we put furthermore, it could be argued that this is functional for society by functionalists such as Parsons. But Marxists would argue that this is only functional for capitalism and the ruling class. 
Parsons argued that the family adapted to suit the needs of industrial society, and Marxists would agree, but suggest that this is to the disadvantage of the working class. Therefore, the family performs the function of forcing workers to undertake their exploitative work by being a unit of consumption. So that last sentence there is the kind of mini conclusion that brings it all together, that links the whole point and the analysis back to the question. So I would like you to pause and have a go at writing this out in full. And you can use the um, last box word for word. That's fine. I gave that to you intentionally so you can see um, what analysis would look like. But the rest of it, you need to reword yourself. And remember that you need to start your paragraph by linking to the question. Uh, one function performed by the family, which uh, benefits capitalism, is. So pause, have a go at writing it. OK, for point two, I'm going to give you a little bit less guidance to see how you get on um, with doing this yourself. So point two, we were going to take um, this point where it says that it depends on the proletariat not seeking to overthrow this unequal system. So the family prevents the proletariat from trying to overthrow capitalism by like going on strike or, or everyone quitting their job and that kind of thing. So the reason for that um, is that the family acts as a buffer zone, according to Zaretsky. So this kind of like calms everyone down, makes everyone a bit happier, which means they go back to work the next day um, and therefore aren't questioning capitalism, makes them feel better, essentially. Um, also, the fact that it is an ideological state apparatus, so it brainwashes us to accept that this system is fair, socialises us to think that the system we're in is fair and equal, as we talked about earlier on. Um, and the family kind of helps create this false consciousness again that the position that we're in is fair um, by socialising us, that it's like the only way and that it's the best way and you must work hard to succeed. So the application is where I want you to then think about it a little bit more for yourselves. So I've written for you the family functions for capitalism because it teaches us. Then I want you to talk about um, ideological state apparatus and the buffer zone. Think about how you're going to word this paragraph, having been given these ideas. And also, I want you to think a bit more about developing the analysis for yourself as well. So Marxist feminists argue we must recognise the role of the woman as the housewife in this. Women are exploited even further as they are producing this buffer zone or safe haven for their husbands. I just remembered I have actually developed it a bit more. The family is not a safe haven for women due to things like domestic violence. Therefore, the family performs a function of preventing the proletariat from overthrowing the system at the expense of the working class and women. So I haven't really written that in full as such that last little bit of analysis you'll need to kind of tweak it slightly so that it sounds good and so that it flows together but you've got um, a fair amount of it there so again pause and have a go at writing it in full and then at the end you should have a 10 marker which i would like you to send to me and i will mark it over the easter holidays um, and give you some feedback on it so i'm looking for good understanding of these concepts and also um, good writing style because I've given you sort of the ideas to put in there but I want you to also show me that you can write well. If you feel really confident on this stuff, um, put all of this to one side, write down the question and just have a go at writing it now from memory. You challenge yourself as much as you want to be challenged and send it over to me. Um, preferably on a Word document, because then I can just type feedback straight onto it. OK, um, so before next lesson, I would like you to make sure that you've just had a quick read through the part on feminism in your packs. So this is pages 40 to 44. Don't complete any activities or questions. Just literally want you to get a feel for it ready for next lesson. So the next lesson um, we can just focus on um, the activities and the questions and things. Um, and on that note, if you therefore, as you're reading, have any questions that you're not sure about um, or any like ideas or sentences in there that you don't really understand, pop it in an email and I'll make sure I address it next time. All right. Thanks, everybody. I uh, hope you're enjoying week two of isolation and please email me if you need anything. 
Bye.